Okay, we are going to find the volume generated by rotating the region, bounded by this and that, about y-axis. So here we go. First of all, to graph this, I'll just show you guys a picture real quick. When x is 0, we know y is 0. When x is 1, we know y will also be 0. And it's a cubic curve. And if you would like, you can also plug in, let's say, 0 0.2 or whatsoever, and you will, get, you will actually get a curve that looks like this right here, right? So it's just like a cubic curve, but this is the portion that we care from 0 to 1 because we care about when y is equal to 0. So you have the, this right here, right? So here is the region that we care, and then we are going to rotate this about the y axis. And now this picture, I'm sorry, it's going to be horrible, but I will try, try to draw it anyway. So here is what we have on the left-hand side. Do the mirror image. So we have a, a picture like this, and then button like that. And here is the y-axis, and then of course here is our x-axis. The problem with this is that you cannot really do this without the shell method, because how would you draw the disk, right? That's one thing. And also, it's not possible. It's, it's really hard. I should say it's really hard to solve for x in terms of y. You can try if you may. But anyway, I'll show you guys the shell method. So to do that, we are going to put a vertical cylinder, kind of like that, and you just take out the shell on the outside. So here we go, you have this, and then you just kind of rotate it about it, and then you have this part, and then you have this, and then you have that. Right? So you can see that this is pretty much a cylinder, but we're taking one part out of it is the shell. It's just like imagine you have a, a row of papers. It's like that. Anyway, this right here is dx. And you see that this right here is y. And the radius is from here to here, which is x. Very nice, isn't it? Now, remember the shell method. The idea is that we take the circumference, which is 2 pi radius times the height, because that's going to give us the rectangular strip, like the rectangular around it. And then multiply by how thick that rectangle is. So we multiply by thickness, right? And right here, we can just go ahead and proceed. The volume is equal to integral, because we're going to add up everything. 2 pi is always 2 pi, that's good. The radius in our case is x. We can just put that down because we are in the x world. Very nice. Well, the height is y. y is equal to that. So let's go ahead and put that down. So this is x times x minus 1 squared, right? And you don't have to square because this right here is just the y, and that's just the height, right? So you don't have to do like pi r squared. It's not like that. So you don't have to have another square on the whole side. This is it. And then we are in the x world. So put on the dx. And we are going to go from, well, 0 to 1 for the x values. And guess what? That's it. All right, we're going to find the volume generated by rotating the region bounded by all these equations here. And we'll do it about y-axis. So here we go. Graph sine x squared. What we do is, well, you can use the graphing calculator, but I'll just give you guys a picture right here. It's kind of like sine, but it's like a little bit like the, the hill is kind of like awkward, like more like this, right? So just take my words for it if you would like. Use your calculator and up to you. Okay, so here is the region that we're talking about. In fact, when x is 0, y is 0, and when x is square root of pi, y is also 0. You can go ahead and check that out. Anyway, we rotate this about the y-axis. So the picture of this kind of thing is very hard to draw, but I will try it anyway. And we end up with this, right? So this is the left-hand side. I mean, this is the right-hand side. And then I'll do the mirror image on the left-hand side, and then you just pretty much do something like this. So that's pretty much the idea, right? So here is the y-axis, and here is the x-axis. So this is the solid, and if you would like, you can also do something like this if you would like, okay? Now, let's see how we can find the volume by using the shelf method. What we do is we put down like a vertical we put down a vertical cylinder. So start with a vertical rectangle first. You do not take horizontal cuts. It's not a horizontal slice. We are not using the disk method. It's not ideal for that, right? Well, go ahead, put on the vertical rectangle first, and then you draw a cylinder, right? So I just kind of mirror image that as well. 
and then on the bottom we have something like this, right? So hopefully this right here is not so bad. All right, now, first of all, this right here is dx. Not bad, right? And we will be in the x world. Second of all, the height right here is y. And then third of all, we have to find out the radius, which is just x. Very nice. And remember the formula, it's going to be 2 pi times the radius, which is just x. And we are in the x world, so that's good. And then times the height, which is just y. And the height is that, because y is not allowed it in the x world. You have to put that down. So go ahead and multiply by sine of x squared. Again, this is the height of the, uh, pretty much like a rectangle, because if you cut this and you open it, you get a rectangle. Anyway, multiply by dx, you're pretty much done. Integrate this guy from 0 to square root of pi. Just like that. Shell method, it's really cool too. Okay? Okay, we're going to find the volume generated by rotating the region, bounded by this, this, and that, and we'll do it about the y-axis. So here we go. First of all, let's graph the region as usual. Here we have the cube root of x. So the picture will look like this. So let me just try my best to give you guys the picture. Let's say something like that, right? And we want the y is equal to 0, which is just the x-axis. And we also want x is equal to 1. So here we go. And notice when x is equal to 1, put it in there, cube root of 1 is also equal to 1. So keep that in mind. Therefore, this right here is the region that we want. And we are going to rotate this region about the y-axis. So let me just do this right here for you guys, like that. Okay, so this is the picture that we are going to get. Again, first I will just do this, and I will mirror image that, and then I have this and also that, right? So here is my cube root of x, and then again mirror image. And on the top, I will just draw the ovals to make it look like three-dimensional. And likewise, like this, right? So here is the x-axis and here is the y-axis. All right, good. Now, as you can see, we do have a hole in the middle. So if you would like, you can also use the disk method, but you will have to do subtraction. And that becomes a washer method. But here, we can actually just use the shell method. And remember, a shell method is just that like you grab a piece of paper, you just rotate it like, not like rotate it, but you just kind of do this. You see, this right here is a cylinder. Right? And if you open it, you get the outside shell. And what we do is, you kind of just go ahead and put down that shell right here. And you begin by drawing a rectangle. And you do the mirror image again. And you do the top oval like this. And also the bottom one like that. First thing first, pay attention to the thickness. In this case, it will be dx because we are on the x-axis. That's just a small change in the x-axis. So the thickness is just dx. Well, the height right here is just our y, and we have that function, which is just that. That's good. And the radius is exactly from here to here, where we are rotating about to the point right here, which is just the x value. So that's pretty much all we need. So here we go. The volume is equal to, well, we are in the x world, so pay attention to the integral, and we go from 0 to 1, right? So for the x value, 0 to 1. And then we have the 2 pi. The radius is x. And again, the reason why we have the radius is because 2 pi radius represents the circumference of this, right? Of this right here. So when you open it, you get the rectangle. So this right here, it's the length, right? the length of the rectangle. Anyway, you multiply by y. y is just that, so I'll just enter the cube root of x. This right here is our y, which is the height of the rectangle, and then the thickness of the rectangle, and then you get the volume. That's it. Oh yeah, forgot to box this for you guys. Okay, we're going to find the volume generated by rotating a region, bounded by this, this, and that, and we'll do it about the x-axis. So here we go. Let's go ahead and look at a picture. So let me give you guys a picture of why it's equal to x plus 3 half power. It looks like this, right? So it's not like a parabola. It's not like a line. It's just like this. <laughs> anyway, and we want why it's equal to 8. So let's say this right here is 8, right? So that means we want to make a cut right here, and then when x is equal to 0, which is just the y-axis, so we are talking about this region here, right? 
So it's not a bottom region anymore, so it's that part. Anyway, we'll take this and rotate about the x-axis. So this is the picture that we are going to get. If you want to use the washer method, you are going to have two pictures because you see we'll have the hole in the middle, right? So you have to use the disk method for the first one and the minus the disk method for the second one. And that becomes the washer method. But in fact, this is not so bad if you do it with the shell method and that's exactly what we'll do. Anyway, again, you draw the mirror image, right? So this is for that. And at the end here, just go ahead and do this, do that. And here is the x-axis like this, right? So something like that. And then don't forget, you still have that inside portion. So do the mirror in your image like this as well. So it's this part. Anyway, here, let's go ahead and use the shell method. And to do that, what we do is, instead of making vertical cuts, we will put the shell like this. So you first draw a horizontal rectangle, and then you do the mirror image right here. And this is how the shell is going to look like. At the end here, you just go ahead and draw your um, oval. So you see the oval is always hard to match with the original picture, right? So that's the idea. So anyway, this is pretty much the shell that we are talking about. And again, the deal is that, imagine you have a cylinder first, which looks like this, right? This is a cylinder. If you make a cut, open it, you get the shell. And that's exactly what we are trying to draw like this, right? Then you have to remember, this part is actually the circumference from the cylinder earlier, so, you have to look for 2 pi r. Well, first of all, this right here is dy. You should look at the, uh, the thickness. And then 2 pi r, the radius is from here to here, which is also y, but that's dy. And then you look for the height, which is from here to here, which is just going to be x. So this is the labels that we'll do. And now let's finish this. The volume is equal to, again, 2 pi times radius. And the radius is the y. And this is good because we will be in the wide world, right? So let's go ahead and put that down. And we multiply by the height, which is x. Unfortunately, x is not allowed it in the wide world. So we have to go back here and, hmm, let's just go ahead and raise both sides to the reciprocal power, namely 2 thirds, like this. And you see, when you have this to that power, they cancel out and you will just get x equals y to the 2 third power. So we will just have to enter this right here for the x part, so y to the 2 third power. All right? So again, circumference times the height and times the thickness. And then, of course, go ahead and integrate that. And we are doing this from y is equal to 0 up to 8. So we integrate this from 0 to 8. And this right here is it the shell method, right? So that's going to help you to get this part of the volume. Okay, we're going to find the volume generated by taking the region, bounded by this and that, and rotate it about x is equal to 1. So here we go. Let's have a picture first. As we can see, y is equal to 4x minus x squared. This is going to give us an upside down parabola. And let's put 0 to be y first, so we can find out the x-intercepts. So let's factor out the x, we'll see we get x equals 0, and the other one is x equals 4. Have a look. Here and here, this right here is going to tell us the x-intercepts, and then the parabola opens upside down, so it will look like this. However, we are not taking this region and do the rotation, because right here it says y is equal to 3. So let me just say this right here is when y is equal to 3, so I have, a, you know, I have to make a cut right here and here. So, this is actually the region that we are talking about. However, we also need to find out the x coordinates here and here, right? To do that, you put 3 into the y, so we get 3. It's equal to 4x minus x squared. Move this and that to the other side, we get x squared minus 4x plus 3. It's equal to 0. Man, don't you guys miss the good old days? This is all you have to do for the whole question, and then you can be getting an A already. <laughs> anyway x is equal to 1, x is equal to 3. So that will be our x coordinates. And these are very important, right? Next, 
Have a look, we are going to rotate the region about x is equal to 1, and that happens to be right here. So let me just put down the dashed line like this, and we'll do the rotation right here. So have a look with the picture. I'm going to, of course, just pretty much copy this down here, and I'll do the mirror image, but this point and the x is equal to 1 touch each other, so the mirror image will look like this, right? And then this right here is when x is equal to 1. That's our vertical line. And a little bit to the left, this right here is my y-axis. And then I still have my x-axis right here. And as usual, on the top, let me just do like oval. And likewise, on the bottom, we can somehow do that and then fix it a little bit so it looks like three-dimensional. Anyway, this right here is the solid. Now, you can try to use the disk method, and of course you have to do the big one minus the small one, and you actually, that's called the washer method. But don't do that, because in order to do so, you have to find out the expression x in terms of y. It will take some time. You, it's doable though, you can try to do it. But here we'll do the shell method. What we do is, we are going to draw a vertical rectangle right here, and then just kind of rotate it, and we can generate the shell. So I will do the mirror image right here, and again, be really careful with this, right? So here is the shell that uh, we have. Now, this is when, yeah, okay. So now, here we go. Have a look, this right here is the thickness of the shell, which is dx, right? Measure it by dx because that's just a small change in the x values. And then the height is from here to here. Well, the top, is our y, and then right here is when y is equal to 3. Remember, let's just look at this. On the top is y, and let me just put on t. That's the y on the top, which is that, 4x minus x squared. And then this right here, it's actually the y on the bottom, which is just 3, okay? So, in fact, from here to here is just the y on the top minus y on the bottom, which is going to be 4x minus x squared, and then minus 3, right? So be really careful with this part. So that's going to give us the height. And then we also have to find out the radius, which is from the center to here, right? And again, this is meant to be my x is equal to 1. My picture is not perfect, I'm sorry. But now, have a look. Originally, when you have this right here, and I'm looking at the right-hand side because originally I have the picture on the right-hand side. This part is just the mirror image so that we can have a 3D look, right? So this right here is x. And I have to go to here only. Originally from here to here is x, but I want to stop right here. The x on the right is x, and then the x on the left is 1. So this portion, and let me just indicate this by blue from here to here, this right here is actually just x minus 1. Again, originally from here to here is x, but you have to subtract the 1 because you don't have this portion. So in fact, this right here is the radius. So now we can put things down nicely. Again, the volume is equal to 2 pi times the radius, which is again x minus 1. So let me just put that down. And then we multiply by the height which is this expression. I'll just write it down as how it is. We have the 4x minus x squared and then minus 3. I'm not going to um, you know, rearrange it whatsoever. I think this is more clear. And then in the end, multiply by dx. And because we're in the x world, we have to integrate it from 1 to 3. Right? Do not look at the left-hand side. This, again, is just to help us see how the 3D looks like, but you always refer back to the original equations and also the boundaries. It goes from 1 to 3, like that. So this right here is going to calculate the volume for us for that thing. Okay, So we have two subtractions going on, one for the radius and one for the height. Be really careful with this example right here. Okay. Okay, we are going to find the volume generated by rotating the region, bounded by this, this, and that, and we'll do it about y is equal to 2. So here we go. First, of course, I will give you guys a picture. Well, 
When we have x is equal to 2y squared, that's just a sideways parabola open to the right. So the picture will look like this. And then next, we want y to be greater than or equal to 0, so it's just the upper part. And then next, we want x to be 2. So when x is equal to 2, let's say it's right here. So you see, this is the region that we are talking about. And notice, when x is equal to 2, if you put it here, 2 is equal to 2y squared. You now stop for y, just take the positive number, y is equal to 1, because we want to find out what this y is. So here we have the 1 right here. Okay? Next, it says we are going to rotate that region about y is equal to 2. This right here is 1 already, so let's say here is the 2, and I will just kind of give it a dash line, and then this is y equals 2. So, have a look. This is how the picture is going to look like. First of all, I noticed that I will take this part and then do the mirror image, and then we will have a hole in the middle, right? So, I will have this part, and then I will kind of, again, just as I said, as I said do the mirror image, and then I will just draw the oval at the end to make it three-dimensional looking. And then, here is the axis of rotation, so that's like the middle part. This is when y is equal to 2. And then we have the x-axis, and then here is the y-axis. And don't forget we still have to take this part, so it will be right here. And there's a gap. As you can see, there's a gap. So it's this part, and then I will do the mirror image, which will be like this. So it's like this portion that we want. Okay? All right, now we will be using the shell method. And to do that, what we do is right here, we will first put a horizontal rectangle and then we'll draw a shell. And to do that, we do the mirror image right here. And then at the end point, again, you just pretty much do the oval. So you can make a shell like that. So it looks like a cylinder. And the reason is because it is a cylinder. <laughs> because if you have a shell, you can fold it into a cylinder. If you have a cylinder, you can take out a shell and you get a rectangle like this. Okay, so pay attention to this picture. First of all, you should always try to see if it's dy or dx. The thickness of the shell is the measure right here, and that will be dy, because that's a small change in the y value, all right? So that's good. Next, let's see the radius. Well, for the radius, it's just going to be from the axis of rotation to the uh, point that you picked right here, right? This is the point that we picked on the curve, so I'll actually draw the radius right here, which is the same right here, okay? So you see that we will have to do some subtraction because we didn't go down all the way to the x-axis. Notice on the top, this is when y is equal to 2. And we are just paying attention to the bottom portion because you always have to refer back to the original. You do not use the top because you only draw the top to help you visualize how the 3D picture looks like. The equation only works for the bottom portion because that's the original, so we're doing the bottom part. Do not draw from here to here, right? Anyway, from here to here, the top is 2, and then minus the bottom if you put a point right here. You know from here to here is the y that you have to subtract, so that's just 2 minus y. The whole thing is 2 minus this portion here, which is just y, so, of course, this portion is 2 minus y, and that will be the radius. Then, we are going to look for the height, which is from here to here. In fact, we have to look at from right minus left. Well, on the right is when x is equal to 2. So this is the x on the right, which is just 2, right, from here to here. So we have 2. Well, as you can see, we also have this little portion that's like being subtracted. So. Imagine from here to here is from here to here is 2, but we're missing this little portion. What's that portion at? This right here is the x on the left, and the x on the left, which is of course happening on the curve, we will have to look back to our original equation because the x value changes based on the y value. x on the left is nicely equal to the 2y squared. So from here to here is 2 minus 2y squared. And that will be the height for the uh, shell. And if you look at it horizontally, it's like this. That's not like a cylinder, of course, but you guys should know what I mean by that. All right, now integral time. 
the volume is equal to integral, and you know it's the circumference, namely 2 pi r, and r is this, which is 2 minus y. Very, very nice. And be really careful, we have a lot of subtraction going on, so be sure you remember what is what. And then you multiply by the height, which is this. This two, again, came from here. And this two is came from there. But anyway, we have all the uh, labeling already, so I'll just put that down. 2 minus 2y squared, and we will have to do this in the y world. So as you can see, everything is legitimate. That's why earlier I cannot just put down x because we are in the y world, so we have to substitute the x l as 2y squared. In the end, we have to go from where to where. y goes from 0 to 1, right? y goes from 0 to 1, always refer back to the original. So this integral will help you to calculate the volume of that solid. And that's it. Okay, we're going to find the volume generated by rotating the region, bounded by this, this, and that, and we'll do it about x equals pi over 2. So here we go. Of course, let's have a picture first. Well, we are talking about the tangent x graph. Tangent x looks like this. And it does have a vertical asymptote, happens at pi over 2, right? So this is when x equals pi over 2. Well, we want y to be 0, and we want x to be pi over 4, so as you can see, you pretty much have a region right here. So let's say this right here is the pi over 4. So this is the region that we are talking about. And we are also rotating about this right here, right? So now, have a look. Here is the picture. And I will, of course, draw this right here, and then do the mirror image, and just do the top like this, and then the bottom like that. Well, right in the middle, we have pi over 2. Right? This is x equals pi over 2. And here is the y-axis, and here is the x-axis. So that's pretty much the picture that we have. All right, so notice that we do have a hole in the middle, though, so I would also make a cut right here, like this. Right? So it's like a, I don't know, it's like a volcano, almost. All right, so we'll use the shell method. So have a look. We will draw a vertical rectangle first because we're just trying to draw a vertical shell. It's just like a cylinder. And now we'll just go ahead and go to the other side and do the mirror image. And then we'll connect like this, like that, and like that. Right? So that's pretty much the shell that I'm trying to draw. First of all, look at the thickness of the shell. Is it dy or dx? Yes, dx, because that little part is just a small change in the x values. So here is dx. Next, we shall look for the radius, and the radius is precisely from the uh, axis of rotation to where we, wherever we are, right? And notice that we're just looking at the left-hand side, this part, because we, our original picture is right here. So do not look at the right-hand side. Only look at the left-hand side, because that's what the original functions are for. So the picture I will have to draw is actually from here to here. This is the radius. Do not draw this part, right? OK, as you can see, we're pretty much doing right minus left. If you have this point right here, that will be from here to here is x. And then the x on the right is pi over 2. So this right here, let me just indicate that, is pi over 2. The x on the right minus the x on the left, which is just x. You don't have to do anything with this x because we will be in the x world. So this right here is the radius, pi over 2 minus x. Now, look for the height. Well, the height is just from the y-axis to, from the x-axis to here, namely just the y expression. Technically, it's the y on the top minus y on the bottom, which is 0. It's just y. And the y, you have to just change that to tangent x. That's it. So have a look. This is the integral for the volume. You have to integrate, and 2 pi of, just like the circumference formula, r is that, which is pi over 2 minus x. And then we multiply by the height, which is the y, but the y is tangent x. Put that down right here. You must change this because we will be in the x world, and because we're in the x world, pay attention to x goes from one, I mean 0 to pi over 4. So 0 and pi over 4. That's it, right? So 
seriously, hopefully, uh, the more you do it, and you will find it, it's more and more fun. And hopefully, this is also easier and easier.